looking back when he puts his hand to the plow. It's not fit for the kingdom of heaven. God don't want things that look back over their shoulders. Hallelujah. You know what? We've got a world full of cell phones. Come on now. Listen to what I'm saying. And they drive reckless. They drive without any conscience. Because they've got their mind upon everything but death. A minister drove into a filling station. I was reading this little piece in the paper. And this attendant to the filling station was busy. Look at just cars coming in and then and, and, and he finally told the, uh, the minister, he said, Reverend, go over to that tank over there. Hallelujah. He said, then I'll, I'll get you filled up. You just get over there and stay by that tanker and I'll come over just in a minute and I'll fill you up. He said, it looks like everybody waits till the last minute to, to come in and get filled up. Praise the Lord. That preacher laughed and said, I know what, how the feeling, that same thing works in the business I'm in. They wait till the last minute. Praise the Lord. You better not wait till the last minute. Praise the Lord. You better get ready. You better put your heart and your life and your mind and your soul. Hallelujah. There is going to come a fire. Praise the Lord. And it's going to burn everything out of the roots. Everything is going to be burned up. Only the righteousness of God is going to be saved. Hallelujah. And them that do righteousness and them that believe in righteousness, them that believe in the holy power of God, they are going to stand. Yeah. 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 Brother Walt, I hate for my children, my mother, my daddy. I hate to see them dying and going to hell. Honey, there ain't a thing you can do about it. Amen. That's left up to every individual. Amen. You can tell them. You can ask them. You can request that they go to church and serve the Lord. But I want to tell you something. There ain't nothing that'll get the job any better than prayer will. Amen. Praise the Lord. I remember my old dad was a praying man. I remember one day he said, Son, you're going to come in and you're going to serve the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't care what you say about it. You're going to serve the Lord. Hallelujah. I remember telling my oldest brother, I said, You know, Dad's a, a gone sort of religious crazy. Hallelujah. He makes me so mad. I can't hardly stand to be around him anymore uh, because he's always telling me, Hallelujah, you are going to serve the Lord. Hallelujah. I said, I'm going to serve the Lord when I get ready to serve the Lord. If I don't get ready to serve the Lord, I ain't going to serve it. Okay. A week, one week later, I was on the altar. This was on one Sunday. And I went back to Illinois with my brother. And on the next Sunday, I was on the altar crying out to the Lord. Praise the Lord. Why? Because Dad took prayer and built a fire under me and it blistered me. Praise the Lord. Let me tell you all something. It's time we begin to pray until we blister some of these people that don't want to serve the Lord. And we start praying until God send down the fire. Hallelujah. And burns all the chaff from around them. And they've got no place to go but to God. Hallelujah. I want you to know something. The day's coming of when the elements will catch a fire. Amen. And they'll melt with a great fervent heat and all the works that are there in will be burned up. Praise the Lord. You see these big fires that happen. I've seen where a big factory caught a fire and where it was burned. Hallelujah. And I didn't get all the details on it, but it's seen then I seen where all that praise the Lord. And you you see all the bad things. All the bad things that are happening. But right in the middle of all the bad things, there's a spark of God that will set your fields on fire. Praise the Lord and will cause you 
to turn around from where you are and put your mind, your heart, your soul, and your life unto God. Praise the Lord. Oh, my. Hallelujah. There was a, there was a couple who went to church one time. They had about six children. And they went into the church. They had been in and out of the church, and they were sitting on a pew. And the mother jumped up and said, The fire, the fire, the baby, the fire. She ran to the altar. She got up and all the way home. She kept repeating, the fire, the baby, the fire. The next day, she had laid her baby down to sleep and it started raining and she run out in the yard. She had her clothes hanging on the line. Begin, you, you older people know what I'm talking about, how begin to pull the clothes off the line and wrap them all over her arm and over her shoulder. And, uh, uh, and uh, all of a sudden there was a clap of lightning came and it hit that big house. And the house was begin to burn. The woman turned around and her house was on fire. And she saw that house begin to consume her baby. And she run towards the house. And everybody started running towards that house. And she was saying, the fire, the fire, my baby's in there, the fire. God had showed her something. But she waited too long. Sometimes God speaks to us. Sometimes God sends us a message. Amen. And we are ignored. Right. I'm going to tell you all something. <clears throat> You're going to get a message from the Lord. He's going to call you. Whether you're ready or whether you're not, God's going to warn you. The grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared unto all men, Titus said. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worry lust, that we should live sober and righteous in this present world. God's going to reveal Himself to you. I know the boy. Knowed him all of his life. Knowed his grandmother and his dad. His grandmother and him have been, and granddaddy's been right here. Hallelujah. Or his daddy and his grandmother's been right here in this church in years past. They've done both gone on to be with the Lord. This boy was driving a sports car and he wrecked it. And the car busted into flames and he was hung. His feet and legs were hung in that car and he couldn't get out. Man come running up to the car. He said to this man, called him by name, said, I've got a pistol. He said, I've got a pistol laying right down here. Will you pick that pistol up and just kill me? So I won't have to go through this fire. And the man said, I turned around and walked away. And I said, I can't kill you. I've got to stand before God. And the man died and burned up in that car, crying, somebody help me. I want to tell you all something. The bad part about it is, you leave here without God in your life, you can burn up in any house you want to or any fire you want to, but if you don't have Christ in your life, you're going to a bigger fire than you've ever seen. Amen. No use in meeting around a bush with people. Stir up the water. The Bible said stir up the pure mind by the way of remembrance. Just think with us. We saw a whole lot of God's people Go on to be with the Lord in the last little bit. And when you're a pastor and you love your church and you love your people, you think this don't bother me. Come down into my heart as deep as it can go. 
I don't have nobody in my church I want to give up. But oh, listen to me, friend. Somebody's going to miss that fire. Somebody's going to go be with Jesus. Lazarus laid at the rich man's got at his gate and said, rich man, would you just kindly pick up some of them crumbs that your dog's eating at your table that you're throwing out for them. Would you just come down here and bring me a few of them? I'm starving to death. The rich man probably said, I don't want that old beggar laying down at my gates every day. The quicker he dies, the better off I'm going to be. But he didn't know that judgment that he was judging his own self right then. Amen. Hallelujah. Bible said that Lazarus died and was carried by the, by the angels oh, thank you, God, into Abraham's bosom. And the rich man died and had a great big burial. Hallelujah. But old Lazarus, he was comforted in Abraham's bosom. But the rich man in hell, he lifted up his eyes and he started a prayer meeting that probably has never stopped. In hell, he started a prayer meeting. Think about that. Fire will make you pray. Fire will make you. Hallelujah. You don't have to go to hell. You go, you go because you want to go. I know somebody say, Brother Wall, that people don't preach hellfire and brimstone. I want you to know something. Hellfire and brimstone just as hot as there was. And he turns to just as long as it ever was. And I want to tell you, God hasn't took me off of preaching again about this thing. And he ain't until he takes me and tells me not to quit preaching. I'm going to keep telling you there's a hell. Uh, to shine and a heaven to gain and you better get on the right track because there's just one track going there. How to do one way flight to glory land. That's all that's going. Are you ready to meet God tonight? Church, I'm asking you are you ready to escape the fire? Hallelujah. And be raised in the likeness of Christ. Praise the Lord. Oh my. Listen. Let me read you this 17th verse. 